In this video, I'm going to go over with you some of the physical findings and laboratory findings often associated with cirrhosis. Let's first talk about physical signs of cirrhosis. The easiest way to think about this is to group it into two distinct groups. The first is physical signs due to portal hypertension. And the second is physical signs due to liver failure. Let's focus on those associated with portal hypertension first. Remember that in cirrhosis, the liver becomes fibrotic and scarred. The result of this is that portal venous flow experiences higher resistance, which results in higher pressures in the portal venous system. Think of it as a plumbing problem. There's a clog where the liver is at, so everything draining into it or the portal system backs up. The most common physical findings of this include splenomegaly, or a big spleen, and ascites, or fluid in the belly from venous blood backing up into the spleen and bowel vasculature, respectively. There are other complications of portal hypertension, such as esophageal varices, but these are internal and not visible without invasive imaging. The physical signs you see associated with liver failure include that from direct liver damage or mechanisms that are more indirect. For example, jaundice, or essentially looking yellow, is a common sign and is the result of bilirubin leaking out into the blood from liver cells due to liver damage. In liver failure, the liver does not function as well as it can, and as a result, it can't break down as much estrogen as it normally can. The result of this are numerous physical signs due to increased estrogen in the blood. This includes spider angiomatas, which are vascular lesions most often seen around the chest and face. Remember that these blanch or lose their color momentarily when you press down on them. Other physical signs of increased estrogen include palmar erythema, in which your palms look red, gynecomastia, and testicular atrophy in males. Similarly, the liver also breaks down ammonia. So when you have liver failure, ammonia builds up in the blood. And this can lead to encephalopathy or some type of altered mental status. Other physical signs whose explanation are not as clear include Terry's nails, Murex lines, and clubbing. I often got Terry's nails and Murex lines confused, but Terry's nails is when the nail bed itself becomes whiter and Murex lines are white lines going across the nails. Patients with liver failure are also noted to have a funny smelling breath called Pator hepaticus. This is thought to be due to either buildup ammonia or ketones in the breath. If you are able to feel the liver, the liver can either be enlarged or shrunken and nodular. Early on in cirrhosis, it is more likely to be larger, but will be more likely to be shrunken later on in its course. Now that we talked about the physical signs of liver cirrhosis, let's talk about some of the common laboratory findings that you might find. Let's go through these one by one. In the CBC sections, patients often have thrombocytopenia due to platelets getting stuck in the enlarged spleen. Patients can also have neutropenia, as well as anemia, because of a combination of poor nutrition and hypersplenism, but thrombocytopenia is more of the classic sign. In the BMP section, patients can have hypervolemic hyponatremia, but it is very common for them to have other electrolyte abnormalities. In the LT section, the bilirubin is often elevated, which is a sign of direct cellular damage. The albumin is also often low, and as a result, the total protein is often seen to be low as well. AST, ALT, as well as ALP can all be elevated in liver cirrhosis, but these can be variable and aren't as great of signs as high bilirubin decreased albumin, and decreased total protein. In the coax section, the PT can be elevated. Other markers such as INR, APTT, fibrinogen, and D-dimer can also be abnormal, but generally, PT is the best of the bunch. That's it for this video, but here's a nice quick review of what we just went over. Here are some common physical signs that you might see in liver cirrhosis. Palmar erythema, Terry's nails, ascites, spider angiomatas, jaundice, spinomegaly, 
more X lines, and clubbing. And lastly, here are some laboratory abnormalities that you might see in patients with liver cirrhosis. There can be a lot of abnormal values, but generally the ones that are slightly better than the rest include low platelets, low sodium, high bilirubin, low albumin, low total protein, and increased PT. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.